Speaking of Leesman and speaking of Fed rhetoric, we, uh, we're going to hear from Steve Leesman right now because we're getting more rhetoric. Steve, uh, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly is speaking right now at the Economic Club of New York. What's the headline here? Yeah, well, it's a bit like Scott. She's been listening to the conversation. She is saying financial conditions have tightened considerably, so she is paying attention to what's going on with, the, uh, with rates here. She says if they do remain tight, the need for further action is diminished. Action by the Fed, that is. Monetary policy, she says, is restrictive. Note she didn't use the phrase that Bostic used yesterday, which was sufficiently restrictive, because she goes on to say that if the labor market and inflation continue to cool, the Fed can hold interest rates steady. If the deceleration of growth and inflation stalls, then we can raise rates further. She talks about optionality quite a bit in the speech. She says that growth and inflation are gradually slowing and the risks to the outlook are balanced. That's important there. Fed doesn't have to rush to any decisions. Uh, can watch its options here. The decline in inflation, she says, has come without significant deterioration in economic growth or the labor market. Now, I want to just show you guys, we've had three Fed speakers now talk about this rise in rates. Daly, I just told you about. She said financial conditions have tightened considerably. Bostic the other day said corporate debt refinancing could be a significant drag on the economy and may do some of the Fed's work for it. Barr, the vice president, for, uh, vice chair for bank supervision, said they need to monitor the impact of tightening on bank credit. So they are aware. They haven't suggested any any time here any, uh, yet, uh, Scott, that they need to, to, to weaken their message yet. But like Jim was recounting what I was saying earlier today, if you look at the 10-year over time, go back to this mid-September and September meeting, a lot of this rise is a result of Fed rhetoric and the change in their forecast. Who knows? They could come up with a different forecast today if you ask them. So my point is that what the Fed has giveth in the terms of higher yields, it could take it the way if it chooses to change its rhetoric. That's why I'm watching very carefully what they're saying right now about these financial conditions you, and how much tighter they are. You, you do have to believe, to, to some degree, they've been moved um, by the movement in what we just showed from the yield on the 10 year, for example, from the last meeting in September Absolutely. to where we are um, at, at, the, at the given time now, if they're, if they're not moved, then, you know, Houston, we got a problem. I'm, I'm right. I'm sorry, Scott, I didn't prepare a probability chart for you. But what you'll see is this entire move in the 10 year has come with almost no increase at all in the probability of a rate hike, another rate hike this year. Still remains in that 40, 45 percent range, 22, 23 uh, percent, up to 30 percent for November. So people are not saying the Fed is going to hike more. That's been one impact. It takes that initial hike or that uh, the final hike off the table for this year. And then the question becomes, does it begin to build in more cuts? Because yep. the Fed is well aware, Scott, that if inflation falls and rates stay high, it becomes by definition tighter, and it may not want that. I will just stress, so far, the rhetoric from Fed officials I've been following has been neutral as to this rise in rates, to saying that it's helpful, backing off the idea of a need for another rate, rate hike this year. But they have not gotten to the point yet where saying these high rates I mean we can cut more next year. They're not there yet. Yeah, and the market is not moving to a place where the Fed's rhetoric hasn't gotten to. Uh, I, I essentially hear you, you saying as, as well, right? The market not moving up its expectations or increasing its probability thereof, right? Exactly. But, but the question, I, I really think, Scott, the Fed could have a profound effect. Let's say Chair Powell were to say, we think these rates are, are first of all, current rates are sufficiently restrictive and saying that financial conditions have become too tight. If he were to say that, I think the market would, the, the yields would have a pretty strong downward impact, which would suggest to the market that they can breathe a little bit of sigh of relief. I am not saying there aren't structural issues here. There are. But what's happened is all of a sudden yields are higher and everybody who's been complaining about the deficit comes out of the woodwork and say, see, I told you so. Now, I'm saying there is a part to the deficit here. There is some surprise issuance, but there's two parts that we, we can't forget. One is the stronger growth numbers, which is why all your people around the table, I think, are 100 percent right to watch carefully the jobs tomorrow. But it's also been Fed rhetoric and their change in their reaction function. If they were to ease back, I think they could have a profound effect on yields. Great stuff, Steve. Thank you so much. Steve Leeson, sure. our senior economics reporter, joining us with those comments from Mary Daly uh, out of San Francisco.